G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Right, Thursday evening here in Australia and the market is down ever so slightly. Only a little bit down 1.5%, so 2.76 trillion. We're up around that 2.8 trillion dollar mark. We were trying to get to that three trillion dollar mark. Didn't quite get there. And look, there might be some news that will have something to do with it, but look, there's still some altcoins that are doing really well, like Solana just continues to pump. It really is on another run. So 238 pushing to close to that kind of $240 sort of mark now. Other coins down ever so slightly. I mean, Bitcoin's just ranging. It's been ranging for a while now. Sort of 60,000, sometimes will push up to about sort of 62, 65,000 thereabouts, but just ranging. And same with Ethereum now. It's kind of stuck around that kind of $4,400, $4,600 level. Uh, but look, the altcoins are doing well. But, you know, again, I said this yesterday, just be careful. Things are a little bit frothy. Good chance we probably get some pullback sometime soon. Again, never trying to spread FUD, just trying to, you know, be honest and, you know, keep it real with you. As they say, I don't want anyone to get wrecked. Uh, and, you know, obviously, I'm never offering you financial advice. You've got to do what's right by you. But if you are new to the market, you know, I've been around for a little while and, you know, my opinion is if you're up uh, on some coins, just consider taking some profit. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying at least consider it. Uh, you know, no one ever lost money taking profits. You know, unrealized gains are just that. They're unrealized. You'll never know them if you don't ever take them. And you are never, I won't say never, because you might get really lucky, but you're highly unlikely to sell anywhere near the actual top. That really is a fluke. Most people sell much lower than the actual top and they buy much higher than the actual bottom as well. But you can make a ton of money in between. So again, you do you. I'm just letting you know I would consider taking some profits around about now. Just some, but that's me. All right, $412 billion in volume. So there was a bit of volume there. Again, Bitcoin stuck under that 62000 and gas prices coming down, which is nice. Still high, anything but cheap, but they are coming down. All right, what's done well in the last 24 hours? Because we can see it's a bit of a mixed bag, but again, generally the market's down 1.5%. All right, IOTX up 109% in 24 hours. Got no idea what this coin is. I don't know what's going on there. I'm going to say it was outside the top 100 and has just kind of surged its way in. I would be taking some profits if something was up 109% in 24 hours. I can tell you that. 100% that's what I would do. If you're in that coin, you do you though. <laughs> All right, as we can see, Holo, a nice pump there. Telcoin, Axie Infinity, Ravencoin, OMG, Amp. Look, plenty of nice double-digit movers and even plenty of nice um, single-digit movers as well. And any gain's a good gain, but it's really those double-digit gains that we want. All right, the flip side though, considering the market is down overall, what hasn't performed so well in the last 24 hours? Top 100. So there we go. Shiba has definitely been having a pullback. It pumped really, really hard. So of course, this is what's going to happen. And then we get those panic sellers as well. People who came in late and it starts to go down and they're at a loss and they'll just panic sell and it gets that cascading effect. And I get the feeling like that's what's going on now. Rune Thor chain down 10%. Look, Polygon even, that's had a pullback. It got up to like $2.08, nearly $2.10, I think, somewhere around about there, and now back under $2. Loop Rings had a really good pump over the last sort of week or so. Uh, pumped really hard, and again, now pullback. Same with Chili, Stacks, you name it. These are all coins that have basically pumped over the last few days. They're cooling off, and then they'll most likely start to pump again in the next few days. That's the way things happen in these bull markets. But again, never financial advice. We could have a hefty correction. We could be in a bear market at any minute. Just keep that in mind. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So as we can see, it's just been ranging for a while. We've had kind of the high. We've had what appears to be the low at the moment, and it's just sideways. Hence why the altcoins are generally doing pretty well. But Bitcoin is going to make a move. It's That's just what it does. It's got a diamond pendant sort of formation uh, heading here. And it's, you know, 
going to pump really hard to the high side or really hard to the low side. And if we go to the low side, I'd be expecting us to come back down to around this 55-ish thousand dollar range. That's really where I kind of see the support. Uh, definitely could be even lower down to the kind of 52, 50 thousand dollar mark. But hey, I'm not saying we couldn't even come back down to the 48s. I just don't think that's what's going to happen. I think we're more likely, if we have a bit of a dump, It'll probably come back down to a roundabout here, touch this line and pump back up. But look, if it starts to come back down to this line, I really would be expecting us to come down to around about the fifty-five to $52,000 mark, thereabouts. But my gut feeling says we're probably going to break to the upside. But again, never guarantees in life. Uh, and again, you, no one ever lost money taking profits. That's the truth of it. Uh, I understand that feeling of nah, it's going higher and I'm going to wait and sell when it gets higher and I've been caught out before. And look, I'll get caught out again. I'm not going to get it exactly right. So again, just yeah, consider taking profits. I haven't taken any profits just yet, but I am definitely considering it. So I'll just let you know that. Not on Bitcoin. Again, I, I don't plan on selling Bitcoin until it's well and truly over $100,000. And even then, I probably will still just hold on to it because... As I've said, I got it at a pretty good price. All right, let's move on. Cash App. Ugh, I'm torn between this news. So they are now going to make uh, it available to 13-year-olds and above. So a teen's going to be able to buy Bitcoin. <sighs> teens are making money. You know, they're either getting POC money or they've got jobs. So they really should be allowed to, uh, you know, spend it in the way that they should. Just investing is really dangerous. Uh, you know, as long as Cash App's... Well, I can't say as long because it's hard to say. But, you know, it would be a real shame for, you know, teens to get into Shiba Inu and they'd just get wrecked. Uh, you know, if we're going to allow teens to invest in things, yeah, look, I don't know what the rules are. I just, I would hate for some, you know, poor teen, anyone for that matter, but particularly teens who are new to the investing space, put in, you know, basically all their money into Shiba Inu and then it turns into nothing and never comes back. Look, if it goes on to do amazing things, then that is fantastic and I'd be so happy for them. But I, ju I just worry. I'm not sure if we really want 13-year-olds uh, investing, but, you know, at some stage you've got to learn the big hard facts of life and generally around that kind of 13 mark is where you start to learn a few of them. So in two minds about this, I like it and I don't like it all at the same time. All right, are the Fed about to taper inflation? So Bitcoin had a bit of a pullback, and again, it's upon news that the Fed's going to taper inflation. Look, even if they do taper inflation or just, you know, really, you know, completely stop it, it's momentary. It really will be momentary. They can't stop printing money long term. It can only be done for a short amount of time. Eventually, the printer will just simply start back up uh, and it'll start to fire up. That is how all fiat currencies go. So while Bitcoin could go down, and look, they might even taper off uh, printing for years, you know, three, four, five years, maybe even 10 years. I think 10, I don't think they could do that. But all I'm saying is eventually it will start to print again. It just has to. That's the way this system works. This fiat system, uh, that's why it only empowers the rich because they get all the money uh, and they get it really really cheap and the poor are the last ones to get it and they get stuck with it uh, and it's already lost a ton of value by the time it gets to us you know i'm not going to go into the exact details of it because look even i couldn't explain it uh properly but that is how the system works you can go and do your own research you know big companies and you know the filthy i won't say the filthy rich because i don't blame anyone for being rich but the really rich they have everything done through companies, so they pay very little personal tax, if any at all. And big companies, like the really big ones, we're talking, you know, Facebook and Amazon and Tesla and things like that, when they want to borrow money, they get it for basically free. So that means, you know, the big rich people are getting money for free. And then it just gets passed down, and by the time it gets to, you know, you and I, it's lost a ton of its value because so much of it's been printed. And again, they get loans for almost free. You know, they don't have to really, they pay back the money. And, you know, rumor is that they don't even pay, pay it back sometimes. They literally just get it for free. I don't know so much about that, but I know they get it very, very cheap. The interest rates that they have to pay when they want to borrow money are minimal. And because they have such a monopoly on the markets, it's just easy for them to pay it back. And again, big companies get bailed out. You know, we get the stimulus checks. 
which are nice, but they're not really going to you know completely bail us out of bankruptcy. Whereas big banks and big businesses, they do get bailed out like that. So just something to keep in mind. We'll have to keep an eye out on you know what happens to you know the the tapering of the inflation, as they say. Again, it, it, it that literally will not long will not last that long. If it lasted five years. Uh, and again, it's tapering. They're not saying stop. I don't think they would be able to stop, but we'll wait and see. But if they did, I would give it a few years at best and they would have to start printing in a really big way. And again, that is why I invest in not just Bitcoin, but cryptocurrencies. A lot of them have a capped supply. Now, not all of them, but 99% of them generally do. So eventually they're going to get to a point where there's just no new ones there. And as long as they're still popular and that's what people are using, then the value should continue to go up. But again, never financial advice. You've got to do you and you've got to work it out for yourself. All right, Australian Senator says clear crypto regulations will be introduced within a year. I love this. Uh, you know, we can only hope and keep our fingers crossed that it's going to be good regulation. But there's always going to be good parts and bad parts. So I'm not thinking this is going to be the greatest regulation ever. But we do need regulation. And I'm glad Australia is getting on the front foot of this. They can see what's coming. And hopefully it's generally positive regulation that really helps you know push Australia to the forefront of this space. Because this is really the new frontier um, for where just everything's going to go. I really do believe... No, just about everything will be on the blockchain just about everything will be tokenized in the future so this is the place to be not everything's going to last not everything's going to be here in a few years time that's the way it goes you can go back to just the last cycle things that were really big and everyone was you know singing their praises and all the rest of it they're you know some of them are still around but they have definitely not come back in a strong way so just remember that whatever cryptos you're in now just because you think they're good there's no guarantees they will be in the next cycle you know bitcoin ethereum and you know some people get angry xrp and litecoin they're the ones that have really been around for a long long time everything else uh it's very very new and you can't say that they really have a whole lot of history behind them all right quinton tarantino he's getting involved with the secret network i've been talking about this project uh for quite some time uh, and on a number of occasions i am super bullish on this project now it's had a really good pump so get on the charts have a look you know look for places where it might retrace to but you know just remember there's no guarantees that it's going to have any further retracement but Quirin, 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 Quinton Tarantino announces secret Pulp Fiction NFT collection so it's going to come out on the secret network it's going to have to do with the Pulp Fiction movies and it says down here that it's uh, will reveal previously unknown secrets about the film and its creator but it's being uh, launched on OpenSea so OpenSea the biggest NFT market at the moment uh, who knows what these the prices are going to go for but this is very very interesting and again more bullish news for Secret Network and again they've got a a token drop shade protocol coming out uh, in the not too distant future you have for shade protocol uh, I'll, you have to be staking secret uh, Luna uh, atom I think that's what it is uh, yeah and obviously secret I think it's those three uh, to get that airdrop so if you want to go have a look at shade protocol something that seems very very interesting as well uh, get on and have a look at that you can find it on YouTube put in shade protocol and likewise you can do that on Twitter as well all right, Aussie crypto micro investment app Bamboo has raised $3 million and they're eyeing a US market. So again, I've got a link down below. I'm not telling you to use it. It's risky like everything else. But it's basically you hook your bank account up to it uh, and you can just make micro investments. You know, a couple of dollars a week, you know, you can do roundups and round downs. So we have Rays here in Australia. I use that as well. It used to be part of the Acorn brand from America. So if you know what those kind of apps are, I really like Bamboo. It's been really good. And again, I've taken money uh, off the thing. So I can say that it has worked for me. I can't again i'm not recommending it to you i'm just saying i've used it i really like it there are risks with all these kind of things but micro investing into cryptocurrencies i think it is a fantastic idea and just being able to micro uh, invest in general really you know it, 
you know, imagine trying to buy some Tesla stocks at, I don't know what they are, $2,000 or something like that. You know, that's just a lot. Some people don't have that. And so when you can micro-invest, just chuck, you know, $5 here, $4 there. Over the long term, that stuff can really start to pay off, and particularly in crypto. But we've got to remember the downside. That's still the same. So you can invest this money, and it might be worth a whole lot one day, and then, you know, only a few days later could be worth a whole lot less but bamboo are pretty good the only cryptos uh, that i have invested in on there is bitcoin and ethereum and as far as i know they don't really have others uh, on there at the moment i could be wrong i haven't checked into it i know they are looking to bring more things to the bamboo market though so link down below if you're interested go and check it out uh, i'm sure they'll give you some kind of discount if you join but don't quote me on that i could be wrong i don't know that for a fact all right squid token so we, you know, if you don't know, it dumped and lost all its liquidity moments after launching. And Binance is doing an investigation, but it is up 600%. Up 600%. Be very, very careful because because it lost all its liquidity, it doesn't take much to pump the price up. So a lot of people might see this and go, oh no, it's coming back and it's going to thousands and then jump you know, jump into it and push it even higher and then the rug simply gets pulled out from them again. When something goes to zero and Squid Token literally went to zero, it doesn't take much to pump the price up. So there's still most likely very, very low liquidity. Please be careful. Don't go chasing stupid stuff like this. Again, it went to zero for a reason because it was just dodgy from the start and Binance are investigating it. All right, last but not least, Ethereum miners have enjoyed more profits this year than Bitcoin miners. Ethereum really has been something that a lot of people have been trying to get into uh, and you know the Ethereum miners are trying to make as much money as they can before it completely goes to proof of stake. So ETH miners have earned nearly $17 billion this year while Bitcoin miners have earned $13.6 billion. Don't get me wrong, they're both doing quite nice, but Ethereum, that is quite amazing, $17 billion. Uh, but the time, you know, the clock is ticking for them. There is talk that, you know, ETH 2.0 will basically sort of be, or at least the beacon chain part, will be rolled out, you know, sometime between December this year and uh, out to June next year. So we'll have to wait and see. But the ETH miners will be lapping it up while they can. All right, look, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. And I'll see you next time.